is your why? What is your gift? Are you an artist? Are you the talent that can produce something no one else produces as a skill or a product or a service or some impact? The why has to be greater than that knocked out. And I love it. Buster Douglas got knocked out. Nobody ever got knocked out by Mike Tyson and ever got back up. But very, very few people and very, very few organizations can clearly articulate why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make money. That's a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose, what's your cause, what's your belief. Why does your company exist? I mean, do we really need another one? Why did you get out of bed this morning? And why should anyone care? Don't be intimidated by the obstacles you see in the distance. Launch. Pursue your goals. Keep on pushing. Keep pushing these obstacles out of your way or find a way to push yourself over them, around them, through them. This is what I know. There's always a way to win. There just is always a way to win. And your job is to find it. Because it's not what you do that matters, it's why you do it. And what you do serves as a tangible proof of what you believe. It's one. You have to have clarity of why. Two, you have to have discipline of how. You have to hold yourself and your people accountable to your own guiding principles and your own values. And thirdly, you have to have consistency of what? Everything you say and everything you do has to prove what you believe. At the end of the day, we live in the tangible world. At the end of the day, the only way people will know what you believe is if you say and do the things you actually believe. This is the concept behind authenticity. People are always telling us people prefer to vote for the authentic candidate. They pref prefer to buy from the authentic brand. What does that mean? What that means is those people in those organizations say and do what they actually believe. That's all that authenticity means. You have to say and do what you actually believe. Don't allow the experts. You know those people in your lives who seem to think they know what it is you can or cannot do and see it as your job to tell you? Don't allow them to tell you what it is you can and cannot do. It will happen, and when it does, my advice to you is to wave at them with one finger and get on with your life. But you get to choose the finger you wave, okay? <laughs> or at least take solace in the words of Rudyard Kipling, who was far more polished than I was, when he says, small-minded people will always try to belittle your dreams, but the truly great ones will make you feel like you too can be great. And this morning I'm here to tell you, yes, absolutely, you too can be great. Discovering your why is just the beginning. In order to enjoy all the benefits of having a clearly articulated why, you'll need to have the courage and discipline to use it. Like Thomas Edison said, vision without execution is hallucination. There is an ideal order of implementing your why, though sometimes reality does get in the way and it all starts with you. Our natural tendency is to start with the tangible. We define our value by what we do. So it takes practice to start with why. Like riding a bicycle, at first we're unsure, unsteady. We're in our heads thinking about all the things we need to do, pedal fast, keep enough speed so we don't fall over. We have to really concentrate. We may even fall over, even scrape our knees, but we get back on the bike and try again. And eventually it becomes natural. Starting with why is no different. At first, it feels awkward. It may not even work, but with practice, it will become so natural that you won't even be able to imagine a time when you couldn't do it, just like riding a bicycle. In time, your why will act as a filter for many of the decisions and choices you make. It becomes a tool to help you find a job or seize an opportunity in which you're more likely to succeed. It removes a lot of the guessing Here's a metaphor to show you what I mean. It's called the celery test. We're constantly asking people for their advice on what to do or how to do it. It's like going to a dinner party and somebody says, do you know what you need? You need M&Ms. We've done so well with M&Ms, you've got to use M&Ms. Somebody else says to us, rice milk. In this economy, you have to use rice milk. Someone else says to us, Kit Kats. You have to use Kit Kats. And somebody else says to you, it's all about celery. We go to the supermarket with all this good advice from all these smart people with brilliant case studies, and we buy everything. We buy Kit Kats and M&Ms, celery and rice milk. There's a lot of time we spend at the supermarket and a lot of money we spend at the supermarket. 
And when we get to the checkout lane, we're standing there with all these products in our hands and no one can see what we believe because we bought everything. But let's imagine we know our why. Let's imagine our why is to always be healthy and only do things that protect the health of our bodies. Now, which products do we buy? Given all the same advice from all the same smart people, this time we only buy celery and we only buy rice milk. They're the only two that make sense. We spend less time and less money at the supermarket. And when we're standing there in line with only celery and only rice milk, now people can see what we believe. Somebody walking past can say, hey, I can see that you're healthy, so am I. You just attracted an opportunity or a referral or a friend, simply by saying and doing the things that you believe. And the best part is it's scalable. As soon as I said the why, you knew exactly which products we were going to buy. This means the more you can articulate your why, the more others will know what you stand for and will be able to help you make the right decisions. From now on, you will work to ensure everything you do is a good fit. If you do too many things that aren't a good fit, you'll feel uncomfortable and people will feel that you're being inauthentic. On the other hand, when you start with why, your ability to stand out, find support, and work to all your natural strengths will flourish. With practice, you will learn to trust your why. You will eventually start to see your job and the things you do as ways to breathe life into your cause. And the better you get at it, the more you will feel that your life and everything you do has purpose. The best way to implement your why is to work at it slowly. You don't have to do all the tips we suggest. What is important is that you pick up to three and commit to practicing and using them now. Luck is where uh, preparation meets opportunity, somebody said. But it's not just trite cliche. It, it, yeah, it makes sense. It's, I, th I, th I think that's a great way of, yeah. Like it's, it, it's because you, you never get to call yourself, I don't know, like, like, like you, you do what you do and be good at what you do, know what you love doing and just keep doing it. Yeah. And if you die and nobody ever comes along and says, here's five dollars for doing that, then, then you, were, you were incredibly unlucky. Uh, right. But you weren't stupid, you, you weren't a loser, like, like, uh, so you, 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 you were doing what you love to do. Um, yeah, and, I, I, and we all know people who are way more lucky than talented. But if they're, but it never lasts. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't pay off. Right. You can't just like have people shower you with opportunity if you're not like working hard. My dreams are first every day. Then my wife. Then my kids. I could take care of my wife and my kids now. Would you agree? I abandon this. This is the fuel for who I am. I abandon this dream. And then I end up, I can't take care of them. And then I'm going to tell them what? It's all right that you didn't win. No, it's not all right if you don't win. You need to win. How many of you need to win more? Okay. If you don't control your environment, folks, somebody else is going to control your environment. You guys that run teams and run organizations, if you do not control your environment, someone else will control your environment. You are being controlled in your environment right now. CNBC, CNN, MSNBC, the parents, the kids, the Twitter, the Facebook, the YouTube, the Google, the Snapchats, or your environment, your friends and your relatives, your uncles, your aunts, the garbage dump called planet Earth that you live on is mostly broken people. If you don't control your environment, it starts with me. When I was 45 years old, I'm like, I'm gonna control my environment. I'm gonna take every penny I have, all the energy I have, all the resources I have, and I'm gonna improve me. If I got to go broke in the process, because I'm already broke. Look, if you're not fulfilled to your, if you're not reaching your full potential every day, you're broke right now.